Among those stopping off at Malta prior to the big three conferences is W. Averill Harriman, U.S. Ambassador to the Soviets, and five-star General George Marshall with British Field Marshal Wilson. The meeting at war-torn Malta is only preliminary to the final meeting with Marshal Stalin. The Mediterranean Conference of the Allied Military Leaders is held within the stately walls of Montgomery House. Here starts a series of talks that will profoundly influence the diplomatic and political future of the world. Field Marshal Alexander of the Mediterranean Theater and General Brehan Somerville and Admiral King attend. But the meeting really gets down to business at Yalta, former Crimean summer capital of the Tsars. Anthony Eden, Foreign Commissar Molotov and Secretary Statinius are on hand to greet England's Prime Minister. Hoping to solve intricate problems of war and peace, President Roosevelt reaches the Yalta meeting, accompanied by his daughter, Mrs. Anna Boddicker. These are Army Signal Corps pictures of an historic world meeting that will shape the destiny of future generations. <laughs> The Summer Palace of Tsar Nicholas II is the setting for Russia's welcome. The conference is to seal Hitler's fate and establish lasting peace and is attended by presidential advisor Harry Hopkins with Mr. Eden. The host arrives, Joseph Stalin, chairman of the Council of People's Commissars of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. <laughs> Not since the Tehran conference 14 months ago have the three top executives of Allied strategy and diplomacy met. Meantime, the results of that first meeting were bearing fruit on Germany's eastern and western borders. Hitler's hordes were being crushed between the jaws of Allied might. His people were in disordered flight. His remaining Axis partner, Japan, was being pounded by terrific air blows. This meeting crystallizes the Allied resolve that Germany shall be beaten unconditionally and that lasting peace shall prevail throughout the world. Lublin, Poland, a name that will live forever in the long annals of Nazi brutality. Here, countless thousands died in a ruthless bloodbath and this ancient castle was the death house for slave workers coldly machine gunned at their sewing machines. Men, women and children, it was all the same to the supermen. This is the war of extermination our enemy has waged. This is master race savagery. Nor do the dead bear all the scars. The living will carry to their graves the memory of this massacre. In this prison, 700 civilians were murdered by retreating Germans. During the occupation of Poland, it is estimated that 1,500,000 civilians were systematically slain. When Nazis whine for a soft peace, remember these pictures. More than 40 persons were killed, 200 were injured, and property damage running into the hundreds of thousands followed in the wake of a tornado that ripped through Alabama and Mississippi. Striking first in Mississippi, the storm swept north for 150 miles, spending its fury at Alabama's state capital, Montgomery. It was here that the tornado tossed boxcars around like matchboxes. To help in relief work, troops were called out. The Salvation Army and the Red Cross also gave invaluable aid. Well, here they are again, the Doggy Dogs at the 69th Westminster Show in Madison Square Garden. While they didn't take any ribbons, this litter of 23 foxhounds stole the show, along with their mama Lena, who bears her honors easily. The St. Bernard always looms large in any show, but the boxers rank second in entries. Of the many breeds shown, few attracted more attention than the ever-popular Spaniels. The towering Irish wolfhounds still top the show for size. Oh, no, they're not sheep, Junior. They're Bedlingtons. A couple of good neighbors, Mexican hairless and Chihuahua. 
And in case you're interested, this is a Basset Hound. Now, the big moment in the dog year, the finals and the winner, best in show in 1945 champ, Scottish Terrier Sheeling Signature. The shadow of the Statue of Liberty furnishes American Boy Scout representatives an appropriate background for the presentation of the first money to go into a World Friendship Fund to provide assistance to scouts in liberated nations. These scouts of all nations take part in paying tribute to that freedom which Miss Liberty symbolizes. This is the 35th year of an organization that has helped develop some of the heroes of this war. But peace and aid is always their aim. The 14th Air Force in China gets the cream of the crop when it comes to experts, and here's the latest to join the technical staff of the division that makes target charts. He's Tiger Joe, and uh, he's coming clean before he's officially accepted. A four-year-old, Joe was found by some GIs, and now uniformed, scrubbed and shining, he's reporting for duty. He receives his commission, but uh, let the signal cord camera show you just what. And every time inspection rolls around, who's the finest soldier in line? You bet. Tiger Joe. His pistol, real to the tiger, is always in perfect shape. For him, we have the ideal soldier. He never has to worry about the commanding officer. And when the company is swung out, Joe's stride may not be as big as the rest, but you can bet this little tiger is always in step. Thank <laughs> you.